Greetings, humans. Today I want to talk about lessons in creativity that we can learn from the Beatles Get Back documentary on the second installment of Motivational Talks. Hey you, yes you, have you watched the Get Back documentary yet? Look, I know that there are a thousand streaming services these days and that the exact thing we were trying to avoid with traditional cable TV has now manifested into multiple platforms and expenses, but find a way to bribe a friend or a family member for access to Disney Plus and watch this thing. I'm not exactly sure how the general public are perceiving Get Back, but let me assure you that it is a rare glimpse into how the creative sausage is made. This video is not a synopsis of the documentary, but having digested it recently, I have to share my thoughts on three lessons in creativity that can be gleaned from it, starting with number one. Nothing substitutes time. There's a common myth that creative works come to the artist like a bolt of lightning, and from this electrified inspiration pours the masterpiece. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but that's not usually how it works. Whether it's during the refinement process or coming up with the initial idea, creativity itself is a grind. Getting back to Get Back. Obviously, the Beatles had gigantic financial backing to afford time. Time is money. These dudes showed up to work most of the time to just refine and flesh out the seed of an idea of someone else's composition, and more rarely to pull one out of the ether. Paul McCartney willing the song Get Back into existence is fascinating. Can you imagine having eight hours or more per day to sit down and jam and write? Obviously, there's a lot more to it than that, but Time is the big elephant in the creativity room. What does this mean for us, for working people with limited time? In order to pursue a creative endeavor, you must carve out time for it. Even if it's just for 30 minutes every other day, imagine what you could do with that time. With this time, just simply turn off your phone, remove distractions as best as you can, and create something. Better yet, if you have a collaborator, carve out a four hour block, maybe on the weekend, and do the exact same thing with that person. Now to me, it's pretty funny, and not unlike reality TV, that one of the main points of conflict in the documentary is the arbitrary time crunch the leading to a performance date. But at the same instance, with the pressure of time bearing down, we witness long sessions of what seems like goofing off and, and mucking around, which brings me to the second lesson, the power of play. Need I say more? Okay, I will. According to psychological studies that I am pulling out of my ass, here are some of the benefits of playing around. It's just plain relaxing stimulates the imagination which helps solve problems and adapt to new situations, helps you bond with the people around you. How does this help us musician folk? Keep watching. I've already heard some commentators speak about how poorly the Beatles played songs in the early takes, and my response is this. You've never had to rehearse. These men are goofing on their own songs. It's an understandable mistake. Let me put it this way. When you anticipate a high pressure performance or recording situation, you have to put in repetition in the music. It's very much like an athlete in training. I was told a long time ago that musicians are small muscle athletes. <laughs> but you have to put in the repetition. And I've seen this done two basic ways. The militant way, rehearsing note for note until your soul leaves your body and all that's left is an empty vessel that can perform or the way the Beatles were rehearsing and get back. Jokes, variations, switching instruments, funny voices. These things relieve tension in a high pressure environment. You gotta have fun, and even more importantly, you gotta let your collaborators have fun even and especially when you're not feeling it yourself. Which brings me to the final lesson, trust. This one is harder than it sounds, but it will get you very far with your collaborators. First, let's define trust. Firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Firm belief in the reliability and the ability. That's heavy, that's heavy stuff especially when it applies to someone else because our egos get the best of us. 
Sometimes you almost have to have blind trust in your collaborators because that stupid ego can just creep up and say, I know what's better here. Even if you do know what's better, which is always subjective in music and the arts, you're going to close yourself off from the greatest possibilities with your collaborator. In the creative process, two minds almost always exceeds the abilities of just one. And this cannot be achieved without deep trust. So what am I saying? If you haven't already, go make a collaborator friend. Got one? Good. Now, I challenge you to this experiment. Get in a room with this person and say yes to all of their ideas and they reciprocate. They return that favor. They say yes to all of your ideas. Make it happen. This can be very uncomfortable as we see multiple times in the Get Back documentary, but I guarantee you will start to meld as a hive mind. Trust, however, is a double-edged sword. And what I mean is in addition to trusting your collaborator, you must trust yourself. That's a more difficult ask for a lot of people, including myself. But I can say if you practice with a good collaborator, a reciprocal effect will take place. And that is when some good magic can happen. This is a complex documentary. As exhaustive and thorough as it is, it is just a snapshot into the lives of these, not just the four individual Beatles, but everyone surrounding them. Glyn Johns, Mal Evans, uh, who has a tragic life after this. So that's why I didn't, I don't want to talk about the documentary itself. And that's why I just wanted to bring these ideas to you. I was inspired in those moments where you could see them really, really working together and you saw flashes of when they were younger and then you could see flashes of what they were becoming, which I find truly fascinating and unique. It's not something we get to see from our creative, um, our favorite creative people. So with that being said, Thank you for watching. I appreciate everyone who's here. And with that, as always, is peace and be good to each other. We're gonna get new non-squeaky chairs in here at some point. Motivational talk!